Hello, I'm Josh Gall. I'm a staff attorney with Iowa Legal Aid, and I'm here to talk about the Legal Services Corporation Midwest Legal Disaster Coordination Project. And there's a lot of pieces to this grant, but I'm going to be focusing on the technological aspects of it. Uh, before I get to those, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on uh, the grant and kind of how we got here. So the grant was made possible by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and the Legal Services Corporation. There were two uh, grantees awarded the grants in the Midwest, Iowa Legal Aid and Nebraska, uh, Legal Aid of Nebraska. And we're working on some things that are pretty similar, uh, but one of the unique features of our uh, project is a smartphone application that's being developed, and I'll be talking about that uh, up, coming up here. But the larger project goal, though, is to create a model of best practices for disaster preparation and response for uh, other legal aid programs to then replicate, uh, share our information with them. So you're looking at what kind of content do you need to have uh, internally resources, what kind of connections should you, you be making within your state, and what kind of internal protocols you should have. Uh, for Iowa Legal Aid, kind of our modern experience in dealing with a major disaster uh, occurred in Cedar Rapids in 2008. Cedar Rapids is the second largest city in Iowa, and it was uh, completely flooded. Uh, the downtown area, including our legal aid office in Cedar Rapids, was flooded. Uh, many residential neighborhoods affecting mostly our client base uh, was flooded. And we were kind of taken aback. Uh, it took us a while to get up and going, and we did. And we made connections and things like that, but uh, we could have done it a lot faster if we had uh, plans in place ahead of time. And so the focus of this grant is to, to help other programs, too, uh, be able to kind of avoid uh, trying to reinvent the wheel after things uh, already happen, uh, kind of like we did. So you might be wondering why we're looking at chickens. Um, this is an example of you don't always know what kind of disasters you're going to be facing. In Iowa this year, we were hit by the avian flu. Over 30 million chickens were killed. Um, over a billion dollars in economic losses to our state, and it affected our client base through layoffs. Uh, there was a big ag corporation that laid people off, and we were part of a rapid response team to, to help give them legal information. These are some more traditional uh, disasters we face in Iowa, flooding, high wind and storm damage, and tornadoes. I included apartment and house fires. It's not always going to be a big disaster. A small house fire is just as devastating to the person affected as a flooding would be to other people. Uh, see, well, we've been kind of fortunate in Iowa this year. Uh, nationally, that's not the case. Uh, there's been severe wildfires in the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, Washington, California, Oregon, Montana, Idaho. Um, and again, we're, this is about sharing resources. So I know the Northwest Justice Project in Washington, we were able to reach out and, and we talked to them and, and shared some of our materials with them. There's been killer tornadoes in Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas, Illinois. Uh, major flooding recently, uh, historic in Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, and Mississippi. Uh, Texas was affected this year, South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina Legal Services, again, is another organization that we were able to reach out to and share some of our materials with. So how do we respond to this using technology? Uh, the objective here for us is to uh, basically develop and improve technology through a mobile-friendly version of our Iowa Legal Aid website that's disaster-focused. We're working with Pro Bono Net on that. Increased use of social media, mainly Twitter, to get information out. And then a smartphone application that's being developed for Apple and Android operating systems. So this is, we've created disaster relief information that we post on our website. And these are very large screens, but hopefully that's hard to read, and that's the point. Um, you know, our clients might not have laptops or desktop computers, and especially in a, a disaster situation, if they had to evacuate, they might not, might not be able to take that information with them. So we want our disaster uh, resources to be accessible on their mobile phones for people to be able to take a, a look at. Now, this is a search for Iowa Legal Aid's Twitter account. You may notice we don't have one. Again, that's kind of the, the point of this project is get us up to speed, and right now we're working on the protocols to reposting and retweeting. So we think Twitter's a good way to get information out there because it doesn't matter if people like you or not, use the right hashtag, you can spread information widely. Uh, the smartphone application is being designed to be used by uh, disaster survivors, obviously, but also responders, support to responders, and attorneys. So responders would be emergency management uh, personnel, support would be Red Cross, Salvation Army, faith-based organizations, and then we're training private attorneys uh, to help us with this uh, disaster grant. So the app uh, itself, the, the goal is to kind of be a one-stop shop. So we have tools for both preparation and recovery. Preparation, obviously, so people are better prepared, but we also want to give them an incentive to download the app ahead of a disaster occurring. Um, and then the recovery, you know, so they'll have resources available. Where can I go for help? They'll have legal information ahead of them. So the main app categories uh, about Iowa Legal Aid, uh, declared disasters, resources, disaster preparedness, and additional agencies. I'm going to be uh, talking about some of the kind of more highlighted features that might be more interesting of the app, and most of those are going to be contained within the disaster 
uh, preparedness category that we have. So the first one is an emergency checklist, got kind of a kit uh, that's going to be in the app. So one thing is to kind of prompt people, what do I need to have prepared? So water, food, clothing, batteries, weather radio. You can have a kit for your car if you, you know, need to evacuate that way. You can have a kit for if you have a tornado shelter for there, um, for your house. Uh, just you know, kind of have that information up and ready to go and check it off when you have it. We're going to have a, a tool where you can upload important documents into the app itself, so your insurance policy, insurance agents information, other records. We're also going to have a family emergency plan that everybody has access to through a custom code. Who takes the pet when you have to evacuate? Who grabs the kit? Where are you going? Um, we're going to have a push notification feature where if we're going to be doing outreach somewhere or if there's a disaster recovery center, if there's specific disaster information we want people to have, we can push that notification out directly to our app user. We'll also be able to control within the app kind of news sources that we find valuable. People will be able to open up that up in the app directly so we keep them within the app. Uh, we're going to be doing a GPS navigation to our office, to Red Cross uh, shelters, uh, to other relief sites. Um, the, one of the cool features we're having too is within that emergency plan, uh, families can develop a rally point feature where the head of the family puts, here's where we're all going to meet. The family enters a custom code and they get GPS navigation to that place. And if it's uh, inaccessible, it's modifiable to where uh, you can change that. And finally, our clients might not be able to do a traditional intake during a disaster. They may not be able to call us or meet us in person. So we want responders to be able to help them and also then be able to access themselves, our services, by just giving us name, phone number, brief description of their problem through the app. And then we'll also be able to talk to them through a live chat feature online. Uh, when big disasters happen, we'll activate. So thank you. Thank you, Josh. Our next presenter is Peter Gunst from Legal IO.